Hello and welcome to this uh, design practice 2 module 23. Uh, I was talking about sensor and actuator design and we had designed various micro valves and you know micro pumps. Um, we were left with some of the other uh, displacement kind of pumps and how they how, how we designed them particularly at the microscopic lens scale and today I am going to talk a little more about peristalsis and then probably some um, other non-mechanical principle uh, for example, uh, thermocapillary or electro wetting effects. So, uh, where we, we do the same you know effects or we take the same effects as we did in the valving case and start doing uh, you know some pump designs based on it. So, let us first look into the very basic uh, uh, scheme that is deployed uh, across a lot of applications uh, for creating microflow transport or microfluidic transport and this is a displacement kind of a system which is otherwise known as peristaltic micro pumps. Now, I would like to just illustrate here that peristalsis uh, happens even within human, human beings and physiologically the intestines are supposed to perform the bile movement uh, within our body uh, through the, the scheme of peristalsis. So, it is about a travelling contractile. So, let us say if we had a flexible pipe and we are uh, creating pressure on a certain area of that pipe, so that the pipe contracts okay, and then move that contract or contracted area forward or in a forward direction uh, in a continuous manner, then obviously, uh, the pipe being filled with fluid on both sides of this contractile would actually have fluid getting displaced in the direction of travel of the contractile, where whereas as the uh, you know as the, uh, the contractile moves forward the space that it creates at the back would have again a pressure difference because of which there would be uh, flow into the region which is uh, just at the rear end of the contractile. So, uh, uh, direction of at the rear direction of the movement of the contractile. So, this is a continuous peristaltic system uh, and you can actually produce an effect in a slightly different manner uh, by using a, uh, a flow geometry through which you could discretize this contractile effect and this is shown in this particular illustration here. Let us say there is an inflow which is happening in a channel which is uh, this is the channel which is colored in blue and uh, it is being uh, overseeded by a set of chambers which can expand and contract maybe through pneumatic um, actuation. Uh, in this particular case, we could have a, a, again a, a controlled valve which bleeds in air into such chambers thus inflating. So, the idea is to create a discrete contractile. So, as one of these chambers inflate, you see the inflated condition being given here. It will actually pinch because this channel down here is flexible. So, it will pinch on the channel to create a contractile effect and then you can have one part of the channel contracted while the other is being contracted. So, that now the fluid does not move in this direction anymore and it starts moving only in the forward direction. And in this manner, if I could do two at a time you know and then at a certain frequency, I should be able to transport fluid from the in inlet side to the outlet side. So, this is exactly how you can operate a discretized uh, fluidic system and obviously, it demands a lot of actuation because all these are air actuated or pneumatically actuated where cylinders are uh, being inflated deflated typically in a material which is flexible and creating a pinched effect on another set of flexible channels over which these cylinders are mounted. So, uh, we want to some, somehow model this uh, uh, design this to estimate uh, that because of such a contractile and a traveling contractile what is going to be the outflow uh, for every such contraction to happen uh, within a flexible micro channel. And for this uh, purpose I have uh, a problem which has to be designed for there is a peristaltic pump uh, having three pump chambers and uh, there is a circular unimorph which is uh, let us say piezo discs and actuators in this particular case uh, they bend and deflect into the chamber over which they are mounting and so such a bending would create a, uh, a volume outflow of the confinement of the chamber over which this uniform is being stationed. 
just as is being represented here for example, this is that disc and this is placed over a, cham a chamber ok. This is the chamber over which this disc is placed and because of the mechanical action as the piezo disc is actuated through a voltage signal there is bending ok. So, the piezo disc bends in this manner and over the outlets on both sides of this chamber it initiates the fluid volume which is present probably uh, inside the chamber to exit the chamber. So, we want to determine that because of the bending of the uniform of uniform disc uh, mounted over such a chamber uh, given some parameters for example, the membrane dia uh, of uh, 4 millimeters for example, uh, and the membrane frequency of 100 hertz. We want to determine what would be the flow rate that it creates every time it bends and discharges. Um, we can assume that there is no back pressure and you know the gauge pressure uh, between what is inside the chamber and outside is 0, uh, both of them are done at atmospheric pressure conditions. Uh, we further assume that there is a maximum membrane deflection of about 40 microns, uh, which the univorf can bend up to uh, and which would create this kind of a volume flow condition. So, we assume the membrane. So, let me just uh, start the computing here. So, we assume that the membrane deflection follows it is of course, a circular membrane. So, this is from first principles particularly uh, solid mechanics. So, it follows the deflection function d at certain radius where d is this displacement. So, we were talking about a uniform displacement of the circular disc uh, d ok. So, the d can be at various places from the center here to the sides and these are different d's ok. So, this d function as a function of the radius here is related to the maximum deflection which is there in the center ok. So, let us assume this deflection right here to be d max uh, times of 1 minus small r by capital R square, capital R being the final radius of the unimorf and small r being the point at which the deflection d is being measured ok. So, square of this. So, when we talk about estimating the the volume that is pushed out because of such a deflection. So, the volume delta v uh, can easily be given by uh, a double integral both in r and phi. We assume that you know the distance r uh, let us say this is how the disk is stationed or positioned in a x y plane and uh, there is a certain distance r which has happened at a particular uh, angle phi. So, we can actually try to compute what is going to be the, uh, the volume of deflection at this particular radius and we assume a very small element at this radius from r to r plus dr ok. So, let me just write it again in a little better manner. So, let us say we are trying to talk about uh, r and r plus dr ok as two elements. This is the whole disk uh, which varies between 0 and r probably. So, this right here is r plus dr. And we want to find out that if supposing there has been a movement of this radius vector 
by an angle delta phi this was phi and so this movement right here which is describing an element okay which has been created uh, by virtue of such a displacement so let's suppose we are uh, looking across this particular disk positioned in the x y plane uh, with the disk centered about the origin and we are talking about a radius vector small r at which the deflection is to be measured we want to find out the deflection causes what kind of volume change um, by virtue of the disk getting deflected okay and the deflection happens out of plane into the z direction for example in this in in this particular case so we take two neighborhood points to formulate a small element let's say uh, this point right here happens to be r plus uh, dr and the radius vector which was actually at phi <coughs> goes to or goes by an additional d phi angle because of which a small element is traced out like this and we want to find out the shaded element and how what kind of volume displacement it has caused and so the best idea would be the delta v in this particular element uh, can be represented as the deflection at the particular point let us say we assume this to be because of the deflection and because of the uh, miniaturized nature of the dr and the d phi we assume uh, this element to have uh, a total breadth of dr okay a total length which is given by r d phi okay r d phi is the length uh, because obviously d phi is the distance which has been moved and by a radius r and uh, then of course we have uh, you know the distance which it has or the, or the or the total amount of distance or the height that this element has moved is dr so i am estimating uh, that this particular element is a cuboidal element just because of the minuscule nature of the element and then we try to integrate it in the whole uh, you know over phi as well as over d dr so you can see there are two variables so the phi varies between 0 and 2 pi and obviously the dr would vary between 0 and r so if we solve this double integral uh, by substituting d max 1 minus small r by capital r square whole square r d phi dr uh, we are left with an expression 2 pi so this is the closed loop solution 2 pi by 3 d max square of r and if i calculate this is the total volume because of the deflection which would happen to this particular piezo disk on giving a voltage signal this happens to be 3.33 10 to the power of minus 10 meter cube now such a deflection is being carried out at a relatively low frequency so at the relatively low frequency of 100 hertz we can safely assume a linear relation between flow rate and pump frequency so we can assume q is delta v times of f typically the frequency as the frequency increases there are going to be inertial delays and so it may not be necessarily linear at that point so we we just assume here because 100 hertz is a very small frequency we can assume the inertial delays to be neglected a very small uh, so we have 3.33 10 to the power of minus 10 into 100 that is about 2 milliliters per minute of discharge rate or if we uh, wanted to see what is a meter cube per second it will be 3.35 10 to the power of minus 8 meter cube per second so that is how you compute how a peristaltic pump through a certain actuation which is made again in electrical manner uh, would be able to give a certain delivery a flow delivery against uh, you know atmospheric pressure so that is how uh, actuated design for peristaltic micro pumps 
can happen. I would also like to uh, give another non-conventional or non-mechanical micropump concept which is based on the Merangani effect is the thermocapillary effect. Let us say we want to create a thermal bubble. inside a capillary. You already know uh, how this effect was earlier illustrated for uh, showing how to block the flows or valve the flows. So, the capillary channel in this case has a radius of 50 microns and the temperature. So, let us say there is this channel here right here. It has a 100 micron diameter, 50 micron radius and you have created a bubble here through either a thermal phase change or electrolytic phase change uh, and uh, the temperature at both ends of the bubble are 100 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. So, let us say there is T 2 and T 1, this is 100 and this is 50. So, as per the, the thermocapillary effect, there is going to be a flow of this bubble towards the 100 degree case because of lesser surface tension on the higher temperature side. And if supposing if we were to use this bubble as a driving bubble for moving the flow across which you know for moving the flow across which the bubble has been spread. Okay. So, it may as well carry as a plug the flow behind it thus creating low pressure everywhere it goes and letting the flow follow it. And also on the other side pushing the flow out. So, it becomes an inlet outlet micro, uh, micro pump. So, in this particular case for designing the actuation we want to determine the driving force. of the bubble surface tension values are provided. So, sigma at the air water interface is 58.9 uh, when ok. So, let me write it as a function of the temperature. So, sigma at 100 degrees Celsius is 58.9 uh, 9 Newton per meter and sigma at the 50 degree Celsius mark is 67.91 Newton per meter. So, these are the two different sigmas uh, which create such a driving force and I would like to look at what is going to be the pressure difference okay, at the two ends of the bubble. So, the pressure difference you must remember for the bubble to survive is represented as 2 sigma by r. Okay. So, at 100 degree end this delta p becomes equal to twice times of sigma 100 degree Celsius by r okay. and at 50 degree Celsius side this delta p becomes equal to again twice sigma 50 degree Celsius by r. So, these are calculated as 58.9 divided by the radius is so a 50 micron radius capillary. So, the bubble size should also be 50 microns for the pumping to happen as the bubble moves forward. So, it is 50 10 to the power of minus 6. Okay. And similarly here this is 2 into 67.91 by 50 10 to the power of minus 6. So, these are the two different pressures which are there at both sides. Obviously, this is a higher pressure and so it will push the bubble forward towards the lower temperature. So, the total actuation force which will be there is again what is going to be the let us say these are P 1 and P 2. So, delta P 2 minus delta P 1 times the total interfacial area of the bubble A and uh, if in this particular case we assume the, the pressure to be perpendicular to the surface of the bubble. Let us say the pressure is coming you know uh, and the contact angle is basically 0. So, you can assume these to be 
somewhat flat at both the ends okay. and so we can approximately take this to be the cross sectional area and this is pi r square of course. So, pi times of uh, radius being 25 microns 25 10 to the power of minus 6 square. So, when we compute this number here uh, we get 0.9 micronewton. So, this is about the force which will be needed to move a bubble through heating the bubble differentially on both ends which is again a non mechanical version of the actuation strategy that could be utilized for the purpose of this particular pump. So, I am going to close on here and probably start the next lecture with few more descriptions of different schematics of micro pumps as well as uh, uh, some fundamentals of gas sensors uh, till until then thank you very much.